In the previous tutorial, we had quite a lot of theory about the logistic regression. And even though we were talking about intuition of the logistic regression, we had to look at a few formulas anyway. So today it's time to make up for that with some practice. And finally, today we're going to build our very first logistic regression. I hope you're excited. So here I've got Gradle opened up and I've already loaded the data set, which is email offer. And I have even created two dummy variables for the gender categorical independent variable. So please go ahead and do that. And once you've done that, we will start creating the model. In order to create a logistic regression model, you need to go to model and then go to limited dependent variable and then go to logit and then go to binary. And so here you need to take your binary dependent variable into and put it into the dependent variable um, option. And also let's set it as default because we'll need to rerun this model in a bit. And we're just going to run the model with one variable. We're only going to use age. So we won't worry about gender at this stage. And before you click OK, uh, make sure to change show slope set mean to show p-values because we are used to using p-values and we'll continue doing that. So click OK, and there you go. That's your model. It's been run. It's ready. As you can see, it's very similar. So here you've got your um, similar to the logistic uh, to the linear regression. Here you've got your variables. There are coefficients and p-values. Here you've got some stats about the model as how it's running, how it's been fitted, and so on. And some additional information at the bottom, which we won't worry about right now, but we will get back to it after we're more comfortable with the confusion matrix. Now what I would like us to do is to look at the graph, uh, the charts of um, the logistic regression, which we spoke in depth about in the previous tutorial. So just go to graphs and then go to fitted actual plot and uh, select the one which is against age. And here you can see the logistic regression graph. It's exactly the one we talked about previously. So vaguely at the bottom, at the top, you can see the actual observations they've been plotted in red and in blue you can see the chart for the logistic regression or the line for logistic regression so let's take a random age here so for instance for age 39 which is over here you've got some variables you've got a variable over here you've got a red line and you've got a red line over there so some people did take up of the offer some people didn't but according to our model anybody who's at age 39 their probability of taking up the offer is about 30 percent so it kind of makes sense, right? Uh, even if the probability is 30%, some people, most people probably won't take up the offer with that probability, but some people still will. And that uh, gives credit to our model. All right, so now we're going to close that and we're going to move this model to the side and we'll run a new model with the second variable included. So let's go ahead and do that. Model, limited dependent variables, logit, binary, and here, just add in your new variable. In this case, you can add male or female, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna add male and then just click okay. And here we'll look at the chart, but we'll do that later. For now, let's look at uh, something else. Let's go to analysis, go to forecasts, and without forecasting anything, let's just run the model and see what the results will be. So here, what you get is a table, which includes your actual, took action or didn't take action um, variable or dependent variable so you know what the result was and you have the prediction for the same person. Here it only has the row number so it doesn't have the gender or age and that's not very convenient. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this new uh, variable by clicking the plus up over here <laughs> and right away it gives it a name so the name is quite funny in this case it says took a hat and uh, that's just just a uh, because it abbreviated or shortened our um, variable, the name of uh, the variable took action. So we're going to say took action underscore hat. And as you recall, this is exactly what we were talking about previously. Hat means prediction. So this is our Y hat that we looked at in the previous tutorial. So if we click OK now, and we can close this and we'll leave the model open, just move it to the side you can see that a new variable has been added to the data, took action underscore hat. And now we can have a look at all of them together. So just highlight the variables. And as you can see, the dummies won't be highlighted that way. Well, if you keep this closed, 
you see the dummies are not highlighted which is good and we go to view or no let's go to data display values so here now you can see more information you can see the age the gender of the person and whether or not they took action and took action had so let's have a look at a couple of examples here and why are we doing this well i'd like to you to be a bit more prepared for the next tutorial when we're talking about false positives and false negatives and if we look at this now it'll make more sense what we're talking about um, in the next tutorial so age this person the first row uh, person in the first row was 38 uh, female they didn't take up action and what our model actually predicted for them is a one percent chance of taking up action so that's good so basically means that our model is in line with with them not taking up action next person is 32 female didn't take up action and our model predicted a very low value which is good next person 46 male took action yes and our model predicted a 99.9% .9 chance of taking action great next person 34 male didn't take action our model predicted a 2.7% chance good so so far so good next person 40 male did not take action but our model predicted an 85 percent chance of them taking action so here you can see that our model made an error if we applied um, that logic where we de derive the um, the y hat value so this is the probability if we derive the y hat value so that one or zero and we use the 50 percent line for us this would mean that the person is predicted to take action but in reality they didn't take action there is um, a zero here meaning that they ignored the offer so this is an example of when a logistic uh, regression makes an error and that's fine this is normal uh, no model in the world will always predict 100 percent correctly once in a while errors will be made it's about controlling these errors and making sure there isn't too many of them and we'll talk about errors a bit more in the next tutorial so that's what i wanted to show you over here um, that's pretty much it uh, for this tutorial. The last thing I wanted to show you was uh, the chart for the model with uh, two variables. So let's go ahead and look at it now. If I go to graphs and I go to fitted versus actual plot and I plot against age, what you'll see here is a bit of a different picture. And you see here two of the sigmoid functions or two of the logistic regression curves and the question is question of the day is why is there two curves and i will let you think about that on on your own so it's it's a little challenge for you to figure out why there is two curves on this chart and i look forward to seeing you next time until then happy analyzing